Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Car Suspension Over 120 Years of Ride and Handling. What we're going to do in today's video is take a look at one of the cars featured in the book, the Porsche 928, and we're going to be looking at its rear suspension. Why is its rear suspension interesting? Because it used bush deflection to help steer the car. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So the 1977 Porsche 928 was a clean sheet design for Porsche. Uh, most of their product line had been based on the 911 for so many years. The 924 had just come out. But with this car, the 928, they could do whatever they want. And what they did was completely different to the 911. This car had a water-cooled alloy V8 at the front. It drove the rear wheels with a rear transaxle. And as you would expect, if it was a clean sheet design, the suspension was also very, very different. And one of the things that Porsche wanted to do was to get away from the oversteer that afflicted the 911 with its engine hung right out the back of the car. So what did they do? Well, they did a very tricky rear suspension. Now, if we have a look at this cutaway, we can see there's an arrow that's pointing to a little forward link that's connected to a longer leading link in the rear suspension. And if we look up here at the suspension out on the ground, we can see there's that little link which is arrowed, the long link, and then there's two transverse links. And that lower transverse link has a flat plate which is able to twist. Now, it's this long forward link that we're interested in because that's what controls the toe angle of the rear wheels. Toe is how directional they are in, in terms of facing directly forward, facing slightly inwards, the wheels, which would be toe in, or facing slightly out, which would be toe out. Now, these angles can potentially change, and the worst thing is to get toe out under braking because the back of the car will then want to oversteer. Now, Porsche didn't want their car oversteering. They'd had enough of that with the 911. So what they did is they designed this very tricky little link at the back that actually caused toe in to occur under braking. In other words, the rear of the car was steered inwards rather than outwards. Now, this next diagram shows how it was achieved. So here's the suspension with it's just its lower links being shown. Uh, and you can see here the wheel is facing directly forward. That's forward. The wheel is facing directly forward, zero toe in other words. What, what happens under braking? Well, here we can see the angle of this arm changes quite a lot. Here it's facing outwards, now it's facing forwards, and it's, it changes in its angle through deflection of that rear transverse member, but most interestingly, through deflections of the bush in there. So that bush actually twists slightly. The little arm then changes its angle, which then changes the angle of the longer arm. Now, this is all exaggerated. The change of toe angle here is much, much greater than the change of toe angle on the real car, but you can see the rear wheels toe in under braking. Now, on this car, static toe in, in other words, it always had a bit of toe in, was only 20, uh, 20 minutes, not very much at all. And that decreased under acceleration, but it never reached toe out. But under maximum braking, toe in could reach 50 minutes, pointing inward slightly, stabilizing the back of the car. Now the car got glowing reviews for its handling stability, and that was because in part of this rear, very tricky suspension design that had what I'd call almost active toe in, certainly compliant toe in under braking. Now these days, Pretty well every car does something like that. I mean, even shopping trolleys with torsion beam rear axles have got toe control bushes on them to give toe in where, where otherwise there'd be toe out and potentially oversteer. But as far as I'm aware, the 928 Porsche was the very first car to have this sort of compliant toe control built into the suspension. A quite amazing design. It's covered in the book, Car Suspension, over 120 years of ride and handling, as are a huge range of other interesting, intriguing suspension systems. The book's out now. Thank you.